Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the seamless eVPN VXLAN stitching verification learning byte. All right, so here is our topology. In this topology, we have two different data centers, DC1 and DC2. And then in DC1, we have two QFX devices, that's Spine1 and Leaf1. And then we have the host one device. And host one is a part of VLAN 10 and uses VNI 5010. And you can see the address here is 10.1.1.1. It's in that subnet and uses dot one. And then in DC2, we have spine two and leaf three, which are QFX devices. And then we have host two, which is a part of VLAN 10 and uses VNI 5010. So same VNI and VLAN as host one. And then host two here, uses the 10.1.1.2 IP address. And we have seamless eVPN VXLAN stitching configured and working. And if you're interested in the configuration, I do have other learning bytes that go over the configuration. So please check those out. And then with this, so it is working and functioning. Host one can communicate with host two. And so things are working. But we want to dive into the individual QFX devices and make sure that things are working correctly. And so one other thing to point out, or some other things to point out, is the loopback addresses of the QFX devices. Spine 1 uses 192.168.100.1. Spine 2 uses dot .2. Leaf 1 uses dot .11. And Leaf 3 uses dot .13. You can see the host addresses here as well. We already discussed those. And then we have the interconnect VXLAN tunnel parameters. Now this is important here that uh, you have the ESI from that is configured on spine one. You see it here and spine two, you see it here. Now that's a big, those are some big numbers to try to memorize, but all you have to realize is how I named these is with the ESI with spine one, it's one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, and so forth. With spine two, it's two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, and so forth. So keep that in mind. That'll make it easy to recognize which ESI, interconnect ESI that is, is from spine one or spine two. And then you have the route distinguishers here for spine one and spine two based off of the loopback IP addresses for those devices. And then the route target we see here, that's the interconnect route target, is uh, target colon one colon one two three. And then you see the interconnect VNI that will be shared across the interconnect uh, VXLAN tunnel. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI and get this started. So here is the CLI for Leaf 1. Let's look at the show Ethernet switching VXLAN tunnel endpoint remote command. And we see some output here. And let's go through it. So we can see that this is the local address, the, the, the local anchor point. We can see that we're using uh, interface, the loopback interface, and we see the loopback address that we're using for that. So that's the IP that's associated with the local VXLAN tunnel, anything that starts from there. And then you can see here that we do have one VXLAN tunnel coming in. It's from the spine one loopback address. We know that that 192.168.100.1 is that spine one loopback address. And we can see the VTEP interface there. And then we can see this mode. This mode says RNVE. Now that tells us it's a regular VXLAN tunnel. And that's exactly what we want to see. This isn't a interconnect VXLAN tunnel. And when we look at spine one, we'll be able to see the difference there. It won't be RNVE for the tunnel that goes from spine one to spine two. There'll be a tunnel that's coming from leaf one to spine one that will show RNVE under the RVTEP mode field. So keep that in mind. And then we can see the VNI here that is being used. And that 5010, that's exactly what we want to see. And then notice the, the VTEP interface. We can look at that in more detail to see what's happening here. And so let's go ahead and clear interface statistics. Just say all. And then show interfaces VTEP. And there's going to be the VTEP interface. Uh, the, the VTEP interface that is being used here is the VTEP 32769. And then you can see we have some input and output packets. Let's go ahead and do that command again. And you can see that is incrementing. And that's perfect. That's what we want to see. The traffic is currently flowing between host one and host two. And we can see that is actually going into that VXLAN tunnel. So perfect. That's what we want to see. And so let's go ahead and jump to spine one and look at the same thing. So let's do the 
show ethernet switching VXLAN tunnel endpoint remote command. And you can see here we have some more information and that's good because we have, we should be having two VXLAN tunnels terminate on spine one, which we do have. So the first one you see here, you can see the IP address for the RVTAP IP field shows that it's spine two's loopback address. And then we can see the VTEP interface, and that's 32770. And then we have the WAN VTEP output here under the RVTEP mode fill. Now, if you see that, that tells you right there that it is an interconnect VXLAN tunnel. And because of the next output you see here, this is the loopback address of LEAF1. And you also see in here the VTEP interface, that is uh, VTEP.32770. And also under the RVTEP mode field, we have RNVE. So we know that's just a plain VXLAN tunnel. Here is a spine two. Let's do the show ethernet switching VXLAN tunnel endpoint remote command. And we can see here that we have a tunnel coming from 192.168.100.1, which is spine one. And then we can see the VTEP interface that is associated with it. And we do have WAN VTEP under the RVTEP mode field. That's perfect, that's what we want to see, that is the interconnect VXLAN tunnel. And then we have 192.168.100.13, which is LEAF3, and we can see the RNVE VTEP mode, or RVTEP mode, and so that's a normal VXLAN tunnel. That's exactly what we want to see. So let's jump to LEAF3 and just take a quick look there, show ethernet switching VXLAN tunnel endpoint remote, and perfect. See that RNVE, and we can see it's coming from spine two, and of course the VNI of 5010. And so things look really good there. That's exactly what we should see. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and look at these uh, VTEP interfaces. So clear in our clear statistic or interface statistics all, and get rid of any sort of information that and so we can start fresh and so then let's do the show interfaces VTEP and recall that it's VTEP 32769 and we can see that here here's the interface and we see input and output packets going in and out of that tunnel that's what exactly what do we want to see and we can run that command again and we can see that output is incrementing and then if we jump to spine 2 Show interfaces VTEP. Actually, let's clear the statistics first. Clear interface statistics all. And then show interfaces VTEP. And with this, it's VTEP 32770 and VTEP 32769. And we can see these interfaces. We can see we have input and output packets. On both of those interfaces, we can run that command again and see that those packets those counters are incrementing. That's perfect, that's what we want to see. And we can look at spine one to verify that as well. And we can see here that we do have packets incrementing. That looks great for those VTEP interfaces. And one other thing I do want to point out that I kind of forgot before is the VXLAN endpoint address. You can see that here. You can see that this is for spine two, and this interface is for leaf one. And so that looks good. We see that incrementing, and we could jump to leaf one. We would have very similar output. Actually, let's just do that real quick. And then let's do the show interfaces VTEP. You can see here that we do have, we can see that the VX uh, LAN endpoint address is for spine one. We can see that the packets are incrementing. That looks good. And so great. So things look good there. And so let's jump back to spine one. And in spine one, let's do the uh, show route EVPN uh, MAC address. So this is going to be the MAC address of host one. And we can look at the route table here and see that we are getting routes for that MAC address. And we see that in the BGP EVPN.0 table as well as the default switch EVPN.0 table. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. And something else we can look at is the, see the show route 
basically same command. Let's do the extensive output though. And then we're gonna match on communities. And helps if I put match in there first. And we can see the communities that are coming through. Now we see this target colon one, colon one, two, three. That is the interconnect community. And then we see the target 65001 colon one. That is the community that is added to the default switch configuration. And so we should be seeing both of those communities show up for or in this output. And then we can uh we can uh match on the ESI value. And we can see here, well, actually let's get rid of zero zero colon zero zero. And we can see here that this route is getting the uh the ESI value of that interconnect ESI from spine one. So that's what's being added to the route. And that route is then being passed on to spine two. And let's see, what next should we look at? Let's, uh, let's go to leaf two and run some of those, not leaf two, sorry, let's go to spine two and run some of those same commands. So let's do the show route eVPN MAC address and type in that Mac for host one. And you can see here we have routes in the, uh, the BGP eVPN zero and the default switch eVPN dot zero route tables. It's perfect. That's what we should see. And then we can look at the extensive command and match on uh, ESI. And you can see here the ESI values you're seeing. And this, so this is from the uh, spine one, and this is the ESI for spine two. And then we, another helpful output to look at, and it's going to be the show ethernet switching flood instant. This is going to show our mesh groups instance. So we're gonna say default switch. And you can see the different mesh groups here. And you can see the underscore underscore VES and the underscore underscore WAN flood mesh groups. And the VES mesh group is for the local DC. So it'll be uh, spine two to uh, leaf three. And then the WAN flood is for the interconnect. Okay, next, a good command to help verify things here is the EVPN uh, instance default switch again, extensive. And we're going to match on DCI. And you can see in here that we're getting routes from 192.168.100.1, which is spine one. And we see a one Mac and IP route, uh, two auto discovery routes. And that's good. That's what we should be seeing there. And then another command, we can do the show eVPN instance DCI command. And this will give us some information on what's actually being passed and with the eVPN interconnect. And you can see here we have the route distinguisher. And so this is spine two's route distinguisher for the interconnect uh, route distinguisher. And then we have the import, the VRF import and the VRF export. And we could look at those policies. And what that'll show, it's just showing that it's importing routes based on the VRF target, which is this target here. And that's what we're using for the VRF import and export. And so you would actually see that in those policies themselves. And something else is the show eVPN database command. And here you can see what we're getting. We can see the, the VNI, we can see the MAC address. So this, is, this one here is the MAC address for host two. We haven't looked at that one yet, but we can see the active source is the loopback IP address for leaf three. And we can see the IP address, and this is host two's IP address. And then with host one, we see the MAC address. And then we see under the active source, we see that interconnect ESI that is configured on spine one. And then you see the IP address for uh, host one there. And then uh, another good command would be the show eVPN database MAC address. And let's use host two's MAC address. I'm just going to uh, copy it here. extensive. And you can see in here that we have, first of all, we have DCI created route. So this is a route that is going to, so spine two is going to advertise this to spine one. 
and it's going to be over the DCI. So that's very important because if we run that same command for uh, the MAC address for host one, we'll see a little bit different output. We can see DC created route. And that means it was is local to the local DC. So that makes sense because spine two to get to it, to get to host two, it just uses a normal EX v or VXLAN tunnel. So that does bring us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to verify seamless EVP and VXLAN stitching operation. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.